So then my friends, next up is the bootstrap grid system. Now for those of you that don't know what a grid layout is, it's a way of placing content onto a page in rows and columns. It's very popular. Now bootstrap uses a 12 column grid system and that means that on any given row, we can set the width of elements to be anything from one to 12 columns in width. For example, right here, we have four elements in a row, all of equal width. That means they must all be taking up three columns in width because four elements times three columns is 12 columns in total. Below that, we can see two elements on a row. The first one takes up eight columns in width. The second takes up four columns. So these grid layouts can be fully responsive to so that at different screen sizes, you can apply different column widths to elements. For example, on medium sized screens, you might want an element to take up six columns in width, but on large screens, you might want it to take up four columns in width. These things are possible using the bootstrap grid system. So let's take a look at a few examples in our code. So I'm going to show you a few different examples of different grids. We're going to start with a basic grid. Then we're going to look at specifying column widths individually. Then we're going to look at responsive column widths. So that's content that changes the width in the row as we reach different breakpoints, as screen sizes change. And then finally, justifying columns at the bottom. So I've created these four different sections for those four different grid examples. Now, the first thing to know when you're working with Bootstrap Grid is that when we create a grid, it always goes inside a container. So I've created containers right here to surround each grid. Now I've used container LG, but it doesn't have to be. It can just be the normal container or any other breakpoint like container XL, for example, or something else. Doesn't matter. Each container also has a bit of margin just so we space these out on the web page a little bit. Okay, so first we'll look at the basic grid. Now, how do we create this grid? Well, there's two steps. First of all, we create a row of content. So we'd imagine a row of content going from left to right, and then we create columns inside that row and spread our content out in that row into different columns. So let me go through this example. I'm gonna first of all create a row by saying div dot row. So it has a class of row, and that is now a row of content, and we can place elements inside this row. So I'm just gonna create a div right here, and then inside that, I'll create another div with a class of P hyphen five to give it some padding. And then also I'll give it a background color so we can see it on the page BG hyphen primary and also text hyphen light so we can see the text and then we'll say call one. So this is going to be the first column, right? Now I'm going to duplicate this and paste it in two more times. So we'll say column two over here and column three. So we have these three elements inside this row and they're all blue in the background. That's the primary color. They all have a bit of padding and they all say something inside them. Now, if I take a look at this as it is, they all stack on top of each other. Now that doesn't look much like a row. That's more like a stack. I want these to be a row from left to right. And in order to do that, we have to apply column classes to these three divs. These are the divs inside the row. So I'm going to alt click all of these three divs to apply a class to each one. And that class is just going to be col. And when I do this, I'm basically saying, look, I want this to take up some room on this row and this and this as well. So they should all be next to each other now, occupying space in these kind of like imaginary columns, if you like. So if I save this now, they're now left to right like this, which is pretty good, right? And we have a little gap in between each one. Okay, so when we use columns like this and we don't specify anything else, the default behavior of the grid is to let this element and this element and this element take up equal space, equal amount of columns on the grid. Now, we said that the grid has 12 columns in total. So if we have three elements, then each one is taking up four columns because three times four is 12. If we add in a new one, let me do this down here and say call four, then each one is gonna take up three columns and we can see that. Now watch this, if I start to make this smaller, then at some point we're gonna see these columns or these different elements 
start to stack on top of each other because out of the box it is responsive and you can see right there call four goes down to the next line if i make this smaller we never reach a point where these start to go down to the next line but to be honest it doesn't look great and we can control how they react when we make the screen sizes smaller and you'll see how to do that later on but we do get this one stacking below so that's how we can make this kind of basic grid just by using a row and then this call class as well all right now what if we want to specify the width of each one of these individually well let's give this a whirl what i'm going to do is copy all of this right here and i'm going to paste it inside this one and then in fact what we'll do is just have three elements so we'll take the fourth one off and these are going to be all the same. We're going to have those classes right here for the content inside each of the columns. But now I want to specify the width of each element. How many columns should they take up? So to do that, I can say call dash and then the number of columns I want this element to take up. So I could say take up six columns. And this can be one to 12 because remember, the width of the whole row is 12 columns. So as long as they all add up to 12, then you're fine. So I'm going to say down here, call hyphen three. So that's nine in total. Now we have three left. So I can say call hyphen three down here, save it. And now the first one takes up six columns in width, three columns for this one and three columns for this one. So that's how we can specify different column widths. All right. So what if we start to make this smaller? Well, if we do that, then it never changes and they start to look a little bit squashed. So nothing goes down to the next line or the widths don't really change. And sometimes we need to make our columns or content inside the grid responsive so that maybe on a small screen, each of these takes up 100% width and they go on top of each other instead. And we can create that kind of behavior using responsive column widths. So again, I'm gonna copy this row and paste it down here. So we have the same content and these things for now are gonna stay the same as well. These three elements, because we want the background primary, a bit of padding and the text light on each of these. But now I wanna specify that for different breakpoints that I want different column widths. So for example, I could say, well, if we're starting from kind of mobile screens, right? When we get to a certain breakpoint, then I want you to have four columns. So I could say call and then SM for small and then four. So what this is saying is, look, from mobile screens, I want you to have 12 columns in width. But when we reach the small size screen going up, then take up four columns in width. And then when we reach large size screens going up, I want you to take up six columns in width. So 12 is the default to begin with. And then it goes to four at small and six at large. So I'm going to do something similar down here. I'm going to say call hyphen SM hyphen four. And then the same down here, call SM hyphen four. And then when we get to a large screen, LG hyphen three, LG hyphen three. So this means at very extra small screens like a mobiles where we don't specify a column width, it's automatically gonna be 12 columns in width. It's gonna take up the whole row and they'll all stack on top of each other. But then when we reach small screens, they're all gonna be four columns in width, which add up to 12, three times four is 12, right? And then when we get to large screens, this one will be six columns in width and these three, which is still adding up to 12 in total. So let's save this and give it a whirl. And we can see right now at very small screens, they're all stacking on top of each other, they're all 12 columns wide. As we get a bit larger and we go to a small size screen at that break point right here, they all take up four columns, they're all equal width. And then when we get to the large break point up here somewhere, this one goes to six columns in width and these are three each. So that's how we can redistribute the content dependence on the size of the screen using these different break point classes for columns. All right then, so lastly i want to show you how to justify content so what i'm going to do is not copy all that because there's a lot of stuff here i don't really want to use instead i'll create a new row and then inside that again we're going to have three different divs now the first one is going to have a call hyphen md and that's a medium size screen hyphen three and inside here we'll do a div with some padding so p hyphen five also bg hyphen primary and then text hyphen light 
and that's going to be call one. So what I'm saying here is look inside this row. To begin with, at extra small size screens, it's going to be 12 columns in width because I'm not specified a width for extra small screens. Then as we get bigger inside the screen and it reaches the medium breakpoint, then I want to take up three columns in width. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other two. So let me copy this, paste it down here a couple of times. So call two and call three. So let's just preview this first of all. Now notice, by the way, they don't add up to 12. There's nine columns in width here. So there's three columns kind of left over in the grid. And we can see that over here. Remember, on extra small screens, they all stack. But when we reach the medium breakpoint right here, if we do that, then they go to three columns in width each. And we have these three columns left over. Now, you can do this, that's absolutely fine, but what if I want to move these three columns so they go maybe to the right side or even in the middle of the page? Well, we can justify them by using some justify classes. And to do that, I could say justify hyphen content, and then hyphen, we could say start, and that would put them all at the start, and that's where they currently are, so it's not going to change anything. If I wanted them to go to the end, I could say end, and they're going to go over to the right or I could say center and they're going to center the columns which is quite nice I could also say between and that's going to put much more space between the columns if I save this notice they take up the full width but now the space is between the columns these are very similar to the Flexbox properties and you might be familiar with them if you ever work with Flexbox and that's what Bootstrap is using right here to justify these different elements inside so let's stick with center so they all go in the middle. So hopefully that explains this grid system a little bit more. We are going to be using it going forward to create our web page and we're going to start that process in the next video.